Hi, it's Katrina. Edward Boland Shipwreck. The Edward Boland Shipwreck is, if not the creepiest, definitely the most amazing shipwreck found anywhere in the world. It's located in Namibia on the Skeleton Coast, a place where shipwreck disasters are in abundance. But the ship is quite far from the coastal waters. It looks stranded and frozen in time, as if it came from millennia ago when the desert was actually an ocean. This particular shipwreck is a brutal reminder of just how foreboding and lonely the Skeleton Coast can be. The Edward Bolin ran aground on September 5, 1909. The large cargo ship was 310 feet long and on its way to Table Bay. Of course, it never made it. It got stuck in sand and has been there ever since. But you're probably wondering how this now creepy ship got so far out into the desert. The truth is that the ship never moved. Instead, it was the desert that moved closer to the water. The desert of Namibia has been growing, slowly getting closer and closer to the shore. So close that in 100 years, the shipwreck is now more than 1,300 feet from the water's edge. It used to be stuck in the surf. Now it's literally stuck in the middle of a barren wasteland, far from the salty waves. Karakoto Nicknamed the Black City, Karakoto is an ancient walled city in the Gobi Desert of Inner Mongolia. This incredible historic site was once ruled by the infamous Genghis Khan. Dating back to 1032, it was built along the Silk Road and was a flourishing trade center and cultural hub under the Western Xia Empire. During the 13th century, Mongol ruler Genghis Khan began a series of military campaigns to take Western Xia territory. He took Karakoto in 1226. The city adopted the name Athena and continued to thrive under Genghis Khan's rule. In 1372, soldiers for China's Ming Dynasty approached the city and surrounded the Mongol king Karabator. They diverted the Black River, Karakoto's only water source, cutting its plants and population off from much-needed hydration. Then they waited. Weakened by deadly thirst, Karabator's soldiers didn't stand a chance against the invading Ming warriors, who ruthlessly slaughtered everyone within the city's walls. Karakoto was ultimately abandoned and fell into ruins. Protected from looters because of its remote location, the site was rediscovered in the early 20th century. Thousands of texts in the ancient Tangut language and paintings were found. The five pagodas and nearly 33-foot-high walls that surrounded the city are still standing, along with several other crumbling buildings. A Lost Civilization A pair of researchers have found traces of a lost civilization in the Sahara Desert using remote sensing technology satellite images, and drone flyovers. The lost culture of the Sahara is known as the Garamantes, and archaeologist David Mattingly believes that they started to build a network of cities and fortifications around the few remaining oases in the Libyan part of the Sahara Desert, sometime around 1000 BC, or about 3000 years ago. This civilization likely reached its peak at the beginning of the Common Era and then began to decline after 700 AD. Mattingly claims that they probably declined after running out of water. That'll do it. But even though this culture is long gone, some of their structures are still standing, albeit in pretty rough condition. The reason not a lot is known about this ancient culture is that not many archaeologists do field work in the hot and remote areas of the Libyan Sahara. This place is harsh and difficult to get to safely, which means that cultures like the Garamantes that thrived before the Islamic conquest of North Africa have all but been ignored. Countries with a lot of civil unrest aren't great for people to go exploring. This is where the remote sensing technology comes in handy. Mattingly and his team have been able to locate at least 158 major settlements and even the remnants of irrigation systems. Unfortunately, there are still no archaeologists working on excavating these sites in the field, but at least we know they are hiding in the desert just waiting for the right time. Underground Ethiopian Churches in the northern Ethiopian town of Lalibela, there are 11 monolithic churches that locals believe were built by angels. Carved into the mountains and plunging 130 to 165 feet into the earth, the buildings have cross-shaped openings that let the sunlight filter into their hollow interiors. Although the local people may believe that all 11 churches were completed by King Lalibela in one night with the help of an army of angels, there are other equally strange theories about how they got there. Some believe that the builders were the Knights Templar, the mysterious group of Christian crusaders who were at their most powerful during the 13th century. King Lalibela wanted to create a new Jerusalem after he visited the Holy Land himself before it was taken over by Muslim forces. 
Thousands attend daily services inside the churches as people stream in and out of the underground temples throughout the day. The churches were not built in a traditional way, but hollowed out from the rock, creating blocks under the surface of the earth. These blocks form doors, windows, columns, and floors. This massive work also has trenches and ceremonial passages, some with openings to hermit caves and catacombs. Narrow passageways lead down to the entrances, where inside, sculptures and crosses decorate the walls. Unfortunately, time has not been kind to all of the structures, with some needing sheet metal to prevent erosion. The churches are now a UNESCO World Heritage Site and are visited by hundreds of thousands of pilgrims every year. The City in Rock Naqsh e Rostam, also known as the City in Rock, is one of the most spectacular ancient sites containing the remains of Persian kings dating back thousands of years. The city itself is cut directly into a rock cliff, dating back to the Achaemenid dynasty of between 550 and 330 BC. This was at the peak of the Persian Empire before they were defeated by Alexander the Great. There are four huge tombs carved into the rock here designed for royalty. While this archaeological site has been mostly ignored thanks to the nearby ancient capital of Persepolis, it's a treasure trove of artwork from the Achaemenid Empire during the 4th and 5th century BC and the Sasanians in the 3rd century AD. It was also a major ceremonial center until the 7th century AD. The tombs here once held the remains of the old Achaemenid rulers. Only one of the tombs has been properly identified as containing the late Persian king Darius I, the third ruler of the empire. The others most likely belong to his successors, Xerxes I, Artaxerxes I, and Darius II. But this is based only on the layout. There are no inscriptions and so far no additional evidence. The facade of the tombs contains images of kings and triumphs, as well as battles and acts of worship. Some of the reliefs were carved over pre-existing carvings, although some figures still come through, like a portrait of a man with a pointed hat and strange clothing. This indicates that this place was once used by an earlier civilization that predated the Achaemenid Empire. The site is also the location of a mighty necropolis, which researchers believe once held the ever-burning flame of the empire. While the tombs were looted and desecrated following the invasion of Alexander the Great, there is much left to be discovered here. The P-40 Kitty Hawk In 1942, Flight Sergeant Dennis Copping crashed his P-40 Kitty Hawk fighter plane into a remote part of the Sahara Desert. It was June 28 when the sergeant was flying his damaged fighter craft between two British airfields located in Egypt, but on his way, he experienced some kind of catastrophic failure and crashed. The fate of the pilot remained a mystery for 70 years until the lost and forgotten fighter plane was finally discovered in the middle of some sand dunes. Archaeologists have referred to the recent discovery of the World War II wreckage as the aviation equivalent of Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt. The aircraft was almost perfectly preserved when it was found in 2012 by a Polish oil company worker while on a remote expedition in the desert, about 200 miles from the closest town. Because the craft was in such an isolated spot, nobody had touched it since its messy landing. The mystery remains as to what happened to the pilot. According to news reports, there was absolutely no sign of him. There had been a crude shelter made outside of the plane involving a parachute, but it appeared that the pilot must have run out of supplies and tried to walk to safety. As you can imagine, there is no way he was going to make it that far, especially since he didn't know where the closest town was. While his plane has been found, the pilot is believed to have died in the desert and covered by the wind and sand. The Skeletons of the Sahara Deep in the Sahara Desert, scientist Paul Sereno discovered a very creepy human burial site unlike anything you've ever seen. The discovery happened by accident when Paul and his team were searching for dinosaur fossils. They were on an expedition to Niger when three weeks into their journey, they stumbled upon some unexpected human bones. The bones had been buried in the sand for between 5,000 and 10,000 years. The truly amazing thing about this discovery is that it proves at least two civilizations flourished in what is today the largest desert on the planet. After Paul's initial discovery, he went back to the Sahara over the next 10 years, embarking on five expeditions. He has now found over 200 burial plots, and each seems to be more mysterious than the last. He discovered a man with his head buried inside of a pot. Another time, he found a man buried under the sand and sitting on the shell of a turtle. 
He also found a young girl buried with a bracelet carved from precious hippopotamus bone. The two distinct civilizations that lived here in the Sahara are the Kithian and the Tenarian. What scientists can't quite wrap their heads around is that these civilizations prospered thousands of years apart, yet buried their dead side by side. Archaeologists have found artifacts like arrowheads and jewelry. They found harpoons carved from bones. However, even after Paul and his team took some amazing skeletons back to their lab at the University of Chicago for analysis, they still haven't quite been able to 100% verify who these ancient people were, how they lived, or why they vanished. Train Cemetery On the outskirts of an abandoned transportation hub near the mesmerizing salt flats of Uyuni in Bolivia, there is a collection of rusting locomotives and rotting train cars. Known as the Cementerio de Trenes, or the Great Train Graveyard, the site is the product of a 19th century plan to expand the Uyuni region's train network. The project never came to fruition, as you can see. As the local mining industry began to dry up, developers ran into negotiation conflicts with other countries and experienced increasingly complicated technical problems. The plans ground to a screeching halt, leaving more than 100 trains parked in the middle of the desert. Most of the vehicles were imported from Britain during the early 20th century. They are heavily rusted from the region's salty winds, and they've also been vandalized. The property is open to visitors, many of whom stop by during a trip to the Salt Flats. A seemingly random train graveyard in the remote, scorching hot climate is strange enough. To make things even weirder, there are several hotels in the region that are made almost entirely out of salt, making a visit to Uyuni anything but ordinary. Shipwreck Treasure The last thing you might expect to find in the desert is a shipwreck, but apparently there are many shipwrecks often found along Africa's skeleton coast. Portuguese sailors once called this place the Gates of Hell because the waters were so dangerous. De Beers Mining Company had located a mining site in Namibia right on the surf zone, but the waves made mining impossible. So they made a huge sea wall creating a lagoon and then pumped the water out. As they did, they noticed strange pieces of wood and metal scattered around. Geologists notified the chief archaeologist of the Southern Africa Institute of Maritime Archaeological Research, who dated the ship to the early 16th century. Then, on day 6, they found a treasure chest full of gold. The ship was officially identified as the Bom Jesus, or the Good Jesus, a Portuguese ship that went missing 500 years ago while en route to India. The ship was loaded down with 2,000 gold coins, tin, ivory tusks, and 44,000 pounds of copper ingots when it apparently went to its watery grave. The gold alone is worth about $9 million. So who gets to keep the gold? In this case, the ship belonged to the King of Portugal, but Portugal generously waived their rights to the find, allowing the country of Namibia to keep it. Archim Archim is one of the most fascinating and mysterious archaeological sites in all of Russia. It's located in the southern Ural region near a small village. The site itself consists of a major fortified settlement that was probably used in the Middle Bronze Age, around 4,000 years ago. The stronghold housed at least 2,500 inhabitants in primitive dwellings. Researchers have found traces of cellars, hearths, wells, furnaces used for metallurgy, and other building materials. Each of the dwellings was built facing a street that thousands of years ago had been paved with wood. There were even drainage gutters for collecting rainwater and getting rid of waste. And to top it off, Archim had a massive courtyard in the center that was used for gatherings and festivals. But who lived here? Well, it was probably the earliest ancestors of the Iranians, a group of people who populated the Eurasian steppe in the 3rd millennium BC. It went undiscovered until 1987, even though the settlement had been photographed earlier in 1952 by aerial cartographers. A team of archaeologists led by a man named Genady Zdanovich investigated the region and found the remains. There have since been over 20 similar structures found in the southern Ural region. The area has since been named the Land of Towns. Of course, there isn't much left of the once great settlement. It would have once had walls and roofs and looked much like a fort with circular streets and smaller avenues. Now it's nothing but a scarred circle of grass in the middle of the barren countryside. Nabta Playa Nabta Playa is believed to be the first astronomical site on planet Earth. It was constructed in the Sahara Desert about 7,000 years ago, making it far older than Stonehenge. 
The huge stone circle was used by a surprisingly advanced culture to track the summer solstice and the annual monsoon season. This was the earliest calendar, the first use of astronomy by a civilization, and perhaps even the starting point for what would eventually sweep around the globe and cause ancient societies everywhere to begin building their own stone monoliths to track the sun and stars. Napta Playa is located roughly 700 miles from the Great Pyramid of Giza. According to Discover magazine, the astrological calendar was probably built by a cult of nomadic people who worshipped cattle. J. McKim Malville from the University of Colorado says that Napta Playa is the first attempt ever made by human beings to make a legitimate connection with the heavens. The only sad part is that today we don't know what these ancient people were thinking when they developed astronomy and astrology. We don't know if they thought the stars and stones were connected, if they imagined the twinkling stars in the sky to be gods, or if they just wanted a reasonable way to track the seasons. While the site of Nadta Playa was discovered in the 70s, it wasn't until more recent decades that the full meaning and importance of this place was understood and shared with the world. Creepy Creature Some very bizarre footage has surfaced recently, causing people to speculate that some kind of goat-killing monster has been prowling a desert in Portugal. In the clip, a very peculiar beast can be seen for just a few seconds, lurching about before vanishing behind a bush. But what's really strange is that the creature has a gait like a man. It walks upright on two legs and almost looks like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Now, some people have claimed the footage shows the chupacabra. If not the real chupacabra, then at least something similar. But it doesn't make sense why a monster from South America known for drinking the blood of goats would be roaming around in Portugal. It just doesn't add up. And besides, the creature is very clearly some kind of humanoid. It looks like a skinny Bigfoot with no hair. Of course, there really isn't anything we can do to prove what kind of creepy thing this is. All we can hope is that we never see it again, and that there aren't any more of them. But considering how vast and empty the deserts of our planet are, there is just no telling what kind of unidentified monsters are living beneath the sand. An Immortal Plant The Namib Desert in southern Africa is one of the world's oldest and driest deserts. It's also home to one of the world's longest living plants known as Velvichia. This strange species has just two leaves, which can grow for thousands of years. The oldest Velvichia plants are thought to date back at least 3,000 years to the beginning of the Iron Age, according to the New York Times. A recent study examined the species' genome in an attempt to figure out how and why it lives so long. Researchers found that around 86 million years ago, Velvichia's genome doubled due to a mistake during the cell division process. At the time, the region was experiencing an especially dry period. Extreme conditions like this are often associated with genome duplication, according to lead study author Tao Wan. Co-author Andrew Leach says this resulted in a lot of junk DNA called retrotransposons. Even worse, the expanded genome demanded a lot of extra energy from the plant just to stay alive. Between one and two million years ago, Velvichia responded to increasingly harsh conditions by silencing its retrotransposons through a process called methylation. This decreased the amount of energy the plant needed to survive, even with its huge genome. As plant biologist Jim Liebensmack pointed out to the New York Times, the bizarre plant's genetic resilience could possibly provide useful information for improving agriculture, particularly as global temperatures increase. Immortal plant life in the harshest environments? The capabilities of DNA are pretty fascinating. Fossilized Whale One look at the barren Egyptian desert and it's hard to imagine that 50 million years ago it was once covered by a vast prehistoric ocean. Egypt gets only a few inches of rain a year, but bodies of whales are emerging from the shifting sands of the Sahara Desert. Known as Wadi al-Hitan or Valley of the Whales, the area contains a fascinating collection of the ancient bones of sea creatures that are now long extinct, the Archaeoceti. The bones have been preserved under centuries of dirt and sand, offering researchers and paleontologists an exciting new glimpse into the past. The species of whales we have today and the ones that existed long ago are very different. Over time, legs became more and more unnecessary for the seafaring creatures, but some of the Archaeoceti skeletons found still have their legs and toes intact. This means the ancient whale ancestor once walked on land and only went into the water when it felt like it, like a hippopotamus. These ancient bones demonstrate how whales evolved from land-based animals to ocean dwellers.
Whales found at the site include the Bacillosaurus, which was a large predatory whale measuring 49 to 66 feet long, and the smaller Dorodon that measured around 16 feet long and fed on small fish. The well-preserved remains from millions of years ago help us to imagine what the lost Tethys Sea was once like. It is now a World Heritage Site and Open Air Museum, where you can go yourself and appreciate the diversity of marine life 40 million years ago in the middle of the desert. The Ring of Brodgar The Ring of Brodgar is one of the most mysterious and yet unknown Neolithic sites in Scotland. The ring was built in a true circle about 341 feet wide and originally consisted of at least 60 giant stone megaliths. Today, there are only 27 of these stones still standing. The stones are slightly smaller than those found at Stonehenge, measuring between 7 and 15 feet, but there are more of them and they make up a larger area. What's really interesting is that no excavations have been done inside the circle, and there hasn't been any scientific dating to figure out exactly when the stones were erected. The true age remains a mystery, though according to the official heritage of the Orkney Islands, where the monolith stands, it could have been built around 2000 BC, making it much younger than Stonehenge. The Ring of Brodgar is the third largest stone circle in all of Britain and is technically classed as a henge. The circle sits inside a natural cauldron formed by the surrounding hills and was probably part of a large prehistoric ritual site that consisted of other nearby monoliths, such as the Ring of Bukan and the Stones of Stennis. It was basically part of a giant religious compound of various stone monoliths. However, because no excavations have been done and the relics have been studied so little, Professional archaeologists are still unsure what kind of religious rituals were held here. Giant Sea Creatures New archaeological research has revealed that some of the largest and scariest sea creatures ever to populate the planet once thrived in what is today the Sahara Desert. Scientists have been examining fossil records for decades to try and figure out what kinds of animals lived in the ancient Trans-Saharan Seaway from between 100 million and 50 million years ago. Researchers now know that the water here was warm and relatively shallow, and also that it was apparently home to sea snakes that were over 40 feet in length and other horrifying monsters. Fossil records have revealed catfish over double the size of their modern cousins, as well as crocodilians with huge snouts and fish that were so strong that they could crush mollusks. You're probably thinking that animals back then were always gigantic, but the sea monsters living in the Trans-Saharan Seaway were extraordinarily large, even compared to other animals from the same era. Maureen O'Leary from Stony Brook University says that the seaway changed so frequently in size and geography that it created a sort of island situation, where the sea monsters living there grew to preposterous sizes because of the lack of predators. But in any case, now these beasts are long gone. Nothing remains except their bones buried in the sand. A Desert Ghost while two men were driving through the desert, they witnessed what can only be described as a walking nightmare. The two men saw from inside their car a mysterious old woman in a white gown drifting through the desert like a ghost. These guys actually captured the whole incident on video. The video was filmed near a small village in India, according to the Daily Star, way out in the absolute middle of nowhere. You can clearly see the woman in white standing at the edge of the roadside hunched over with her face shrouded in jet black hair. You can even hear the driver screaming in horror as the woman turns to them, then begins running at their vehicle as if to leap through the windshield. The men start shouting, lock it, lock it, and who is that? The horrible ordeal goes on for much longer than seems necessary. The desert ghost shuffles after their car, spasming in the dust, looking a lot like the girl from the ring. The people in the car shout and scream, they go in reverse to get away, but no matter what they do, the witch-like figure continues to give chase. Then, abruptly, she is gone back into the night. Unfortunately, there's no way of telling if this was really a ghost. There is a chance the lady in white could have just been a confused village woman in distress. There is also the possibility that she could have been a distraught spirit trying to get some attention. Regardless, super creepy. And if that ever happened to me, I think I would have a heart attack. What's the scariest thing you've ever seen while driving around at night? Let me know in the comments below. A Lost Libyan Civilization In 2011, scientists revealed the discovery of over 100 ancient fortresses in the Sahara Desert in southwestern Libya. Dating back between 1 and 500 AD, these settlements were inhabited by a mysterious but advanced civilization called the Garamantes. 
Researchers identified the sites by examining satellite photographs and aerial images dating back to the 1950s and 60s. In 2011, a team of experts traveled to the fortresses, which are located 620 miles south of the Libyan capital of Tripoli. There, they found pottery samples, confirming that the Garamantes once occupied the site. The archaeologists noticed that their buildings were remarkably preserved, but they didn't get a chance to explore as in-depth as they wanted to. Unfortunately, the Libyan civil war cut the expedition short. At first glance, the ruins have a Romanesque feel, but they are not Roman at all, as the architecture belonged to a powerful African kingdom. The ruins were extremely tightly packed, with as many as 10 village-sized settlements being crammed into a one-and-a-half square mile area, almost like a modern city. Scientific knowledge of the Garamantes is limited. Violence and civil unrest in Libya has prevented thorough research from taking place, and the country has a limited budget for investing in archaeology. Going on what little they have to learn from, experts have determined that the Garamantes had their own writing system. They also made high-quality textiles and were metal workers. Their most impressive achievement, however, was their advanced irrigation system, which enabled the society to grow plants, even in the middle of the desert. Ghost Town You wouldn't be able to tell if you were to look at Kolmanskop today, but over a hundred years ago, it was one of the richest communities in the world. In 1908, diamonds were discovered in the area. It's rumored that there were so many diamonds that people were on their hands and knees just picking them out of the sand. Kolmanskop became a booming mining town in the middle of the Namibian desert. Houses went up along with schools, ballrooms, casinos, hospitals, factories, and also the first X-ray station in the region. Adventurers and diamond seekers flocked to the city with high hopes of building their fortunes. In 1912, town was responsible for producing nearly 12% of diamonds in the world. Literally, a diamond in the rough, Kolmanskop became the epicenter of luxury in the middle of nowhere. Unfortunately, the gems didn't last. New technology and machinery practically scraped the desert clean by the 1930s, and the town's riches depleted tremendously. New diamond deposits were found 168 miles near Namibia's border, and families and miners moved on. The town was essentially abandoned, and the harsh desert sands have since swept through and reclaimed the city. The eerie scene left behind is quite the sight to see, and Kolmanskop is now a popular tourist destination. Are you a fan of ghost towns? Let me know in the comments below! The Plain of Jars The Plain of Jars in Laos is an incredible archaeological site that not many people have heard of. There have been more than 90 different zones found in the region of the Plain of Jars, with at least 400 stone jars spread between them. These jars stand about 10 feet tall and are spread across forests, valleys, and hills. What's truly incredible about these mysterious jars, which were first discovered in the 1930s, is that they were used as coffins for dead people. Human remains were put inside of the jars and then buried. However, even after so many years of study, archaeologists can't say for sure exactly why this type of burial was practiced in ancient Laos, or how they even got so many of these giant jars into the middle of nowhere. According to Life Science, the largest of all the jars found weighs 10 tons, making it hard to believe that these ancient people could have made it all by themselves. One of the most recent expeditions to the Plain of Jars revealed a skeleton buried inside of a shallow pit. The lead archaeologist on the case, Dougald O'Reilly from the Australian National University, said that the skeleton was found with a piece of stone covering his face and his eye sockets staring through the hole in the rock. However, they don't know exactly why the stranger was buried in such a bizarre way. To tell the truth, there is much we still don't know about the Plain of Jars. An ancient mega lake. The Sahara Desert may be a barren wasteland today, but new geological evidence has revealed that there was once a giant lake in the eastern Sahara 250,000 years ago. This happened when the Nile River flowed through a channel and completely flooded an area of over 42,000 square miles. Evidence of this ancient mega lake was spotted by Ted Maxwell from the National Air and Space Museum while studying radar data of the Egyptian Sahara. As a professional geologist, Maxwell was able to understand the patterns of wind-blown sediments and changes in the bedrock. By piecing all these different clues together, Maxwell realized that buried beneath the shifting sands is evidence of a huge body of water, and there may even still be buried channels 50 feet beneath the surface of the desert. 
Even more amazing is that scientists were able to use fossil fish found about 250 miles from the Nile River and 810 feet above sea level to determine where the shoreline of this ancient mega lake would have been. They looked at the locations of Paleolithic human settlements and they all corresponded to where the edges of the lake used to be. There is really no denying that the Sahara was once a prosperous lakeside destination. There was water, there was lush vegetation, everything you could want. And this may have been what coaxed early human beings into the area, where they eventually founded the great early civilizations. Horned Kangaroo Skull In rather bizarre news, the first ever complete skull of a horned kangaroo was discovered in an Australian desert. Researchers stumbled upon a small cache of fossils inside a series of caves in the Nularbor Plain. Excavations were done by scientists with the Western Australian Museum in Perth. Besides just finding the incredible skulls of horned kangaroos, they also found megafauna fossils and the skeleton of a giant marsupial lion known as the thylacolio. If you've never heard of a horned kangaroo, you're not alone. One of the lead researchers on the case, John Long, recently told new scientists that the kangaroo is very strange and doesn't look like any kangaroo still living today. It also doesn't look like any fossil of a kangaroo previously discovered. It's completely new, with bizarre bones sticking out above its eyes, what you might call horns, and a very round snout. The big mystery now is discovering what kangaroos may have needed horns for in their distant past. Some researchers speculate that the horns were used to guard the kangaroo's eyes. Because kangaroos live in very arid environments and are often forced to eat very spiky plants, the horns may have kept their eyes from getting pricked. Initial dating work suggests the kangaroo lived somewhere between 200,000 and 500,000 years ago. It lived in the Nilarbor Plain, an area of Australia that stretches all across the southwest coast and is an inhospitable desert. It's important to note that half a million years ago, the area would have been wetter and more hospitable, supporting more diverse animals. Aralkum Desert Ship Graveyard Before the 1960s, the Aral Sea was the world's fourth largest inland sea. Once home to a thriving fishing industry, it straddled the border between modern-day Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. That all changed when the Soviet Union diverted the two main rivers feeding the sea to supply farms with water. The once vast body of water began to rapidly dry up, leaving behind a salty, poisonous wasteland in its wake. As the sea shrunk, its salt content reached toxic levels and killed off its marine life. With no more money to be made from fishing, people began to hightail it out of town for better prospects elsewhere. Most of what was once the Aral Sea is now the Aralkum Desert, and it's littered with dozens of rusting fishing boats that former residents abandoned. The decaying ships represent the distant memory of a place that once had a thriving economy before it was replaced by the desolate and eerie scenery that gives the feeling of some kind of post-apocalyptic movie set. Most of the ghost ships sit at the edge of former harbor cities and seaside towns, near clusters of derelict buildings. The few people who still live in the area are plagued by health problems from the toxic dust that blows around. But in a surprising turn of events, the Aral Sea is once again being fed by the rivers that were diverted away from it. Its salt content has decreased, and fish have returned. For now, it's uncertain whether the sea will be restored to its former glory and perhaps replace the depressing sight of rotting ships. Arabian Stone Gates Leave it to Google Earth to help make an amazing discovery in one of the world's biggest deserts. In 2017, archaeologists uncovered 400 stone structures that they believe were built thousands of years ago. Thought to have been built by the ancestors of modern-day Bedouins, the structures known as gates are at least 2,000 years old, but some believe they could have been built as far back as 9,000 years. Modern-day Bedouin people call them the works of the old men. The stones are stacked about three feet high, but they don't look like much at ground level. It wasn't until they were recently seen from the sky that we could tell exactly what they look like and how many there were. David Kennedy, an archaeologist from the University of Western Australia, said that he refers to them as gates because when you view them from above, they look like a simple field gate lying flat, two upright posts on the sides connected by one or more long bars. For years, Kennedy cataloged the nearly 400 gates, with the longest measuring more than 1,600 feet long. But how did they get there in the vast desert plains of Saudi Arabia? These structures are difficult to spot from the ground as they are hidden away in the barren landscape of the desert, but once you see them from a satellite view, they stand out perfectly. Other structures are shaped like kites, 
and archaeologists now believe that these shapes were used to funnel stampedes of gazelles and other migrating animals into the structure to prepare them for slaughter. A new study published on these stone structures claims that humans may have driven a species of gazelle to the brink of extinction. These mass hunting techniques would have been spiritually significant social events, and done on such a large scale even thousands of years ago would have had a catastrophic impact on the animal population. San Agustin Deep in the untamed jungles of Colombia, the San Agustin Archaeological Park stands as one of the most mysterious ancient sites in all of South America, where an enigmatic and long-forgotten civilization once lived. There are three main sites here, littered with artifacts that date at least 3,000 years back. Some claim that the original culture of San Agustin goes as far back as 3000 BC, but those claims have not been proven. Another unproven claim is that the culture here was linked directly to the ancient Olmec people of Mexico, and that both of these cultures were influenced by visitors from another planet. Yikes, that spiraled quickly. Even though the civilization from San Agustin is so mysterious, they live on through thousands of pieces of their artwork. They left behind tombs, massive carvings of what appear to be gods and creatures, and curious domed structures made of rock that could have been used for religious ceremonies. There have even been idols found that are double the height of an ordinary human. And the craziest part is that nobody knows what the idols represent, where the San Agustin culture went, or why they vanished thousands of years ago and left behind so many relics. Mysterious Impact Crater A mysterious impact crater was found in the Sahara Desert, and scientists are linking it to a gemstone found in the tomb of the Egyptian king Tutankhamun. An international team of researchers analyzed satellite images of the vast and sandy terrain between two remote Egyptian villages in the desert. What they found was El Bar Crater, a massive hole about 1,000 feet across. It looks exactly like the impact crater made by a meteor. Scientists also found traces of chemicals that confirmed there had been a high-energy impact event at the site. This was done by inspecting the concentration of certain minerals in the rocks at and near the site of the crater. The rocks inside of the crater had been melted from something hitting them extremely hard. In other words, the crater was 100% formed by a meteor impact. But here's where the impact crater ties in with King Tut. Back when British archaeologist Howard Carter entered the young king's tomb in 1922, he discovered a breastplate encrusted with precious jewels and one extremely rare gemstone. It turned out that this rare gemstone was made of Libyan desert glass, a substance made almost entirely of silicon dioxide. It's one of the rarest minerals on the entire planet, and is found only in the most desolate areas of the Sahara Desert. But for decades, scientists have not been able to figure out where the Libyan desert glass came from. Now it seems that the rare gem may have been created when a meteorite exploded over the Sahara Desert and caused a unique chemical reaction. This would mean that the Egyptian king was walking around with a gemstone in his breastplate brought to him from outer space. You know how intense the Egyptians were with their symbolism, so if that doesn't have powerful significance, I don't know what does. The Domes The domes of Casa Grande are located in the Arizona desert. The domes were originally built for the manufacturing of computers between the late 1970s and early 1980s. However, the domes were never completed. The only thing that got finished were a few foundations and domed ceilings. The plan was to create a kind of Silicon Valley in the middle of nowhere in Arizona. But nobody was very interested in the project, and it was eventually abandoned. It's still there, standing today. One of the buildings looks oddly like a flying disc, and the other three buildings are just big concrete pillars. But some weird stuff has gone on here over the years. Some locals claim there has been witchcraft activity and satanic worship. They claim Satanists have been using the creepy tunnels to try and summon the devil. And while this is probably not true, Nobody really knows except for the supposed Satanist who may or may not be using the domes for their blasphemous rituals. But not only are the domes some of the creepiest things found in the desert because of their mysteriously dark past, they are also dangerous. In 2018, one of the dome-shaped buildings collapsed, and even though the town ordered the destruction of the remaining domes, as of November 2019, they were still standing, and they might still be there. Film City if you drive several hours from Qatar's capital city of Doha into the Qatari desert, you might stumble upon a deserted, ancient-looking Bedouin-style village filled with minarets, a mosque, and mud-brick houses with wooden doors. 
The exact explanation behind its presence is somewhat of a mystery, depending on who you ask. Known as Film City, this site is thought to be an abandoned film set that was built for a TV series or a movie. It was once a fishing village, but was apparently abandoned during the 1970s. In 2009, the village was partially rebuilt, presumably for filming purposes, although the stories vary and nobody seems to know what to believe. The deserted nature of Film City is eerie enough on its own, but it gets even creepier when you think about the vast, seemingly limitless desert that surrounds it. Visitors are unlikely to see a car drive by or cross paths with another human, except for the security guard who oversees the property, and getting there requires a four-wheel drive vehicle. Gibeon Meteorites Space rocks found in the deserts of Namibia have been used by ancient people for thousands of years. These mysterious rocks came to the attention of Englishman Captain J. E. Alexander, and rumors began that they perhaps held alien magic. 600 million years ago, a meteor hurled towards the Earth, shattering into over 100 pieces that were then strewn all across the desert. The captain was traveling in Africa and heard about large masses of iron rock, mostly around the village of Gibeon, earning them the name of the Gibeon Meteorites. He went to go see them for himself and sent a sample back to London, where an astronomer discovered that it had a high quantity of nickel and said it was from an iron meteorite. Locals used the rocks to make tools and weapons, Tribesmen in the Kalahari Desert used them as the arrowheads and tips of their spears and javelins, believing they would give them extra alignment and balance. Since the first discovery of these meteorites, more than 25 tons of Gibeon meteorites have been recovered. Lines and patterns found on the outside of the rocks are the result of cooling in outer space over billions of years. Until recently, most that were recovered weighed between 200 and 1,000 pounds. One of the largest ever found weighs in at a whopping 1,400 pounds. They each have a distinctive look due to the change in temperature when they entered the Earth's atmosphere. Friction raises the surface temperature above its melting point, and then, as the meteorite descends, the temperature drops, resulting in a thin layer of dark glass on the exterior. They also sometimes develop shallow pits that resemble thumbprints. Many of them are now on display, and any meteorite found in Namibia is automatically protected as a national monument and cannot be damaged or removed. The Indonesian Lost Temple A long-lost pyramid-like structure was recently found in Indonesia, and experts believe it could be the remains of an ancient temple that had been hidden beneath the soil, undisturbed for thousands and thousands of years. The hidden temple is located on top of Mount Padang in West Java, and it was found buried beneath yet another archaeological site that was discovered in the 1800s. The original site is nothing more than a few stone pillars sticking out of the ground. It wasn't until recently that a huge subterranean structure was found with help from Andang Bakhtiar, a geologist from Indonesia who led the drilling and soil analysis. Even though the structure appears to resemble a pyramid, it's probably closer to a unique temple. It hasn't actually been dug up yet, but researchers have managed to use X-ray tomography and 3D imaging to discover different layers of the temple, which appears to have been built over millennia, with new layers being built on top of old ones. It's currently estimated to be around 3,500 years old. As for what the temple was used for, researchers aren't really sure. What we do know is that the local people in the region still visit the top of the hill where the structure is buried for prayer and meditation and this behavior could have been passed down over the past few thousand years, ever since the original temple was buried. Stone Age Graveyard The largest Stone Age graveyard ever found in the vast nothingness of the Sahara Desert is providing an incredible record of life from a time when the region was a green paradise. This graveyard has just been discovered in the country of Niger by Paul Sereno from National Geographic. His team went on an expedition to find dinosaur balls, and instead found a Stone Age archaeological site dating back 10,000 years. The site has been dubbed Gobero, and it is bursting with skeletons of both humans and animals. It's located inside the Tenere Desert, known as a desert within a desert, for its extreme remoteness. The graveyard has so far revealed two human populations living one after the other within a space of about 1,000 years. The skeletons included full sets of teeth, and small hands reaching out through the desert sand with finger bones still intact, and none of this had ever before been seen by modern human eyes. There were also artifacts like harpoon points and stone tools. These civilizations lived in the Sahara Desert when it was green and filled with animal life. 
The first group were hunters who colonized the Sahara between 10,000 and 8,000 years ago and were amazingly tall at an average of over 6 feet. The newer group was there between 7,000 and 4,500 years ago and had a more diverse economy of hunting and cattle herding. These later people were often buried with impressive jewelry, including bracelets carved from hippo tusks. It's not exactly clear what drove both groups out of the area, but it likely had something to do with the shifting climate as the Sahara Desert turned from a peaceful paradise into a violent wasteland. The Yucca Man From the Mojave Desert to Joshua Tree National Park, there is something horrifying scaring campers and hikers alike. It's known as the Yucca Man, and it's been around since the 1960s. The creature supposedly attacks army recruits training in the desert, specifically those on guard duty at night. There have also been reports that the Yucca Man opens tents and peers in at sleeping campers. Sometimes the beast leaves behind a footprint. Sometimes it leaves a blurry residue on someone's photograph. There has never been certifiable evidence that the Yucca Man exists, though there have been plenty of eyewitness accounts confirming its identity. The Yucca Man is the desert Bigfoot of the Wild West. A single snapshot is the closest thing we have to physical evidence that the beast exists. It was taken at the Hidden Valley campground back in the 1990s. All we can see is the blurred shape of what seems to be a walking primate. Amateur cryptozoologists have been searching for the Yucca Man for years, while mainstream scientists dismiss any mysterious creature as just being a bear or a coyote, or even just a creepy human. But this doesn't add up. The natives who lived in California way before Europeans ever arrived also spoke of a strange entity that lived in the desert. They called it something like the Hairy Devil. It matches the description of the Yucca Man perfectly, leaving many to wonder, just what is this thing? Old Skagen Church Sometime between 1355 and 1387, a Gothic-style church dedicated to St. Lawrence of Rowe was built just outside of Skagen, Denmark. Known as the Old Skagen Church, it belonged to the Danish crown until 1459, and it is one of the area's oldest buildings. Over the centuries, the region underwent a process called desertification, which is kind of what it sounds like. Sand swept in from the nearby Robjerg Mile Dune and began accumulating around the brick church. By the late 18th century, the building's entrance became buried regularly. Whenever they wanted to attend a service, Worshippers had to dig their way in through the sand. Eventually, the problem became too much to deal with. The church's contents were removed to protect them from damage, and in 1795, Denmark's king allowed the church to close. Most of the structure is either destroyed or buried. All that can be seen today is the main tower, which sticks up out of the sand. The National Museum of Denmark owns the site and maintains the tower as a navigational landmark. Very limited excavations have been carried out on the rest of the building. Local authorities believe that the floor and altar are still there, swallowed by sand, but they haven't investigated to confirm their suspicions. Ancient Megaliths While you are most likely very familiar with Stonehenge in the UK, there is a place with standing stones in Egypt that was built thousands of years before Stonehenge. Nabta Playa is considered the world's first astronomical site. People here use the massive stone circles to create a type of calendar which would align with the sun and stars to mark the seasons, the solstices, equinoxes, and served as a ceremonial site. This place dates back to 7,500 BC and was discovered 700 miles south of the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. It is the oldest stone circle in the world, constructed by a cult of nomadic people who worshipped cattle. The megaliths may have played an important part in their lives as they would have used the stars to travel across the desert to locate watering holes. Back then, people navigated using stars and the circular motion of the heavens. The structure was found in the 1970s while Egypt planned a major dam project along the Nile. At that time, an American archaeologist named Fred Wendorf, with the help of a local guide, found an area where a series of large stone megaliths sat lying on the ground in the middle of nowhere. At first, Wendorf believed they were natural formations, but on further inspection he realized the site was once a large lake bed and that the stone circles were something more remarkable. It would take several decades and years of excavations to uncover the mystery of the stones. J. McKim Malville, professor and archaeoastronomy expert, reports that this is human beings' first attempt to make a serious connection with the heavens. This was the dawn of observational astronomy, he adds. What in the world did they think about it? Did they imagine these stars were gods? 
And what kinds of connections do they have with the stars and the stones? Malville and others believe the complex and symbolic Nabta culture may have been the precursor civilization for the great advanced ancient Egyptian society that eventually built the famous pyramids 4,500 years ago. Colonial Maryland One of the first ever European settlements to be established in the United States was recently uncovered by some very excited archaeologists. Travis Parno had been searching for the legendary St. Mary's English settlement in Maryland for years and he finally found it. By scanning the St. Mary's River using ground-penetrating radar, archaeologists and geophysicists were able to track down the outlines of ancient buildings that would have otherwise been impossible to find. They then confirmed that they'd stumbled upon the Palisade Fort that had been built in 1634, before the United States was even a country. The scans revealed post holes and evidence of dwellings, including some that could have been Native American. It wasn't until the excavations got underway that they finally turned up physical proof of the fort, finding a brick cellar, the remains of a guardhouse, some arrowheads, pieces of a musket, and so much more. Most of the relics were from the 1600s, but the arrowheads were actually dated back 4,500 years. Believe it or not, archaeologists have been searching for this place since the 1930s. It is currently the earliest colonial archaeological site in the entire state of Maryland. From above, all you can see is an empty meadow near the ocean. But underneath the surface, there is evidence of some of the first colonists to arrive in North America. There were 150 of them, most of them English Catholics who were fleeing persecution back home in England. They had arrived at this ancient site on two ships, named the Ark and the Dove, in March of 1634. Of course, the first ever English settlement was Jamestown in 1607, but St. Mary's was close behind. Ancient Rivers Three ancient rivers once linked Sub-Saharan Africa to the Mediterranean Sea. This was about 130,000 years ago, when three enormous rivers flowed across much of North Africa, providing a safe route of travel for ancient humans through what is today a merciless desert. The rivers were discovered after scientists simulated ancient rainfall patterns using newly advanced computer climate models. They were able to recreate what the desert looked like over 100,000 years ago, and this led them to the discovery of the rivers. But what's really cool is that the rivers are still there today, just buried under dozens of feet of sand. Scientists say that the most popular of the three ancient Saharan rivers was once called the Irarhar. This river system seems to have been a very popular travel route, and archaeologists have found artifacts from the Stone Age along much of what was once the Irarhar River system. The river would have provided green corridors where animals and plants could survive as well as massive lagoons and wetlands. Further surveys will probably reveal even more evidence of human activity dating back tens of thousands of years. The only issue is convincing archaeologists to get out there and dig through all that sand. Who's up for the challenge? Ballarat Ghost Town One of the creepiest places in any desert of the world is Ballarat, a very spooky ghost town in California. Who knows, it could even be home to the Yucca Man. The town of Ballarat sits at the base of the Panamint Mountains, lonely and hot in seclusion. The temperature reaches into the 120s Fahrenheit in the summer, while nights in the winter are brutally cold. The town came into existence in 1896 as a base for the miners heading out into the mountains and canyons around Death Valley. Its heyday was from between 1897 and 1905, a measly eight years. In that time, the settlement of 500 people hosted seven saloons, three hotels, a jail, and a morgue, and even a post office and a school. But what made Ballarat such an unusual mining town is that it didn't have a single church. This was practically unheard of at the time. And maybe that is why the town began to decline soon after it was established, with the post office closing in 1917 and everyone leaving except a few lonely prospectors. Over the years, Ballarat somehow remained standing. Even the old graveyard is there to see today. But be careful, many visitors to Ballarat report seeing ghosts loitering about the decrepit old buildings and the faded tombstones. Huge Prehistoric Cemetery while hunting for dinosaur remains at a site called Gobero in Niger in 2000, a group of scientists stumbled upon a large human graveyard dating as far back as 10,000 years. It's the biggest known cemetery ever found in the Sahara. In addition to around 200 human graves, the remains of fish, crocodiles, and other animals were buried there. 
Evidence indicates that the site was occupied during two different periods separated by a 1,000-year gap. The groups that lived there, the Kiffians and Tenarians, left behind an array of grave goods in addition to the remains buried at the cemetery. Researchers have learned a lot about what day-to-day -day life was like for people from these groups based on the artifacts, which include bone jewelry, arrowheads, and harpoons. There were numerous bizarre burials, including a man whose head was placed in a pot and another who was laid to rest on top of a turtle shell, as well as a woman who was buried facing two children. The women and two children were likely buried on top of a bed of flowers, as evidenced by pollen found in their graves. Even more strangely, the tools and animals at Gobero seemed out of place for the modern Sahara climate. This is because they originate from a time known as the period of the Green Sahara, also known as an African humid period, during which changes in the Earth's orbit brought more rain to the region, resulting in an uptick in vegetation, water, and new life forms that come with it. Pretty amazing what can be learned from burial sites, even details about dramatic shifts in climate over time. The Polish Pyramids A group of massive tombs were recently discovered in Poland, and archaeologists have dubbed them the Polish Pyramids. That makes sense. At least a dozen of these huge tombs were discovered during a research project being carried out by professionals from the University of Szczecin. The ground structures discovered were built to resemble elongated triangles, like pyramids. The structures weren't that tall, only about 10 feet off the ground, but they were an outstanding 492 feet long. They have been buried by forest and brush, which made them very difficult for the archaeologists to study. So far, fragments of pottery have been discovered along with other miscellaneous artifacts. It's believed that the tombs were built sometime between the 5th and 3rd centuries BC by the Funnel Beaker culture. Those who are buried inside these tombs were likely elders of this ancient European tribe. Excavations are still ongoing, so there's probably a lot more yet to be found. There have, however, been experts claiming similarities between the mounds discovered in Poland and the ones found in other parts of England. Stonehenge and these Polish pyramids were also made around the same time, suggesting one of the cultures may have been influencing the other, and the ancient tribes in Europe may have had more contact than previously imagined. The Whale Graveyard Buried beneath the Sahara Desert are thousands of whale bones. These whales date back 50 million years, when the Earth looked completely different. The highest concentration of whale bones has been found in a place called Wadi al-Hitan, or the Valley of the Whales in English. The bones found here belong to ancestors of modern whales, with the first ones being discovered way back in 1902. These fascinating beasts roamed the ocean that once covered all of the Sahara Desert. This was known as the Tethys Sea, and it filled the space between Africa and Asia before the Himalayas had even been born. Just imagine! Before the biggest mountains on Earth were even pushed out of the ground, enormous whales had already evolved from land creatures with legs and were swimming through the ocean in an area that is today nothing but an inhospitable wasteland. The Valley of the Whales provides a complete glimpse into the past, with the bones of extinct ancient whales spanning many millions of years. The Archaeoceti whale skeletons belong to the earliest form of cetaceans to emerge from the murky evolutionary past. These whales still have their legs and toes intact. Other whales have hip bones that were later lost. Their hip bones had previously been used for legs that carried them scuttling across the ground. For whatever reason, they returned to the water and over the course of millions of years, their legs became unnecessary in the water and they lost them. The whale graveyard shows us a clear picture of the progression of time and explains why some of the whale fossils still had remnants of their old limbs. Other fossilized sharks, fish, and plants found in the area have helped paint a picture of what the Tethys Sea would have been like. The Cave of Horrors The story of Kenny Veach is one of horror and intrigue. Kenny went on a short overnight trip into the Sheep Mountains of Nevada, deep in the desert in late 2014. He was 47 years old and an experienced desert hiker. He never came back from that overnight trip. To this date, Kenny has never been found and nobody knows what happened to him. But it's not Kenny's disappearance that's so spooky. Instead, it's what he found prior to vanishing off the face of the earth. Before his final overnight trip into the desert, Kenny had gone for one of his usual desert hikes. During the hike, he discovered a strange cave in the middle of the Mojave. The cave, upon Kenny's approach, gave him a feeling he really didn't like. He suddenly trembled with fear and felt great trepidation, so Kenny ran away from the cave. 
he uploaded a video on YouTube describing to his followers what happened to him. They wanted him to go back and film the mysterious cave. Kenny agreed to do that. He went back into the wilderness, this time with his camera and a pistol. He was ready to find what he had called M Cave because its entrance was shaped like an M, but he couldn't find it. His followers were extremely disappointed. Kenny agreed to go searching a third time. He took all the necessary precautions, he brought his 9mm and he set off. He has never returned and nobody has seen Kenny since. It's also important to know that no one has ever found the mysterious M Cave. An Abandoned Prison in 1952, the U.S. government built the Boron Air Force Station in the Mojave Desert. Located in Kern County, California, the site remained in operation until 1975, when it was decommissioned. Four years later, the abandoned collection of buildings was turned into a federal prison. Boron Federal Prison could accommodate up to 540 prisoners and had 25 units for staff members. There were several industrial buildings at the site where inmates assembled military vehicles and repaired forklifts for the U.S. Army. Like many low-security prisons, Boron had barrack-style housing instead of actual cells. But the facility was unique because it had almost no security, even compared to other minimum-security prisons. It wasn't surrounded by a fence, there were no guard towers, and the doors didn't lock. But why? The property was so remote, the prisoners generally weren't dangerous to the general public, although there were a few instances where inmates escaped. Boron closed in 2000 amid budget cuts, and the building that housed the inmates was demolished in 2018. Several decrepit buildings are left standing at the site, which is still owned by the Federal Bureau of Prisons. They're in a noticeable state of disrepair and are not exactly safe to explore, so trespassing is strictly prohibited. The Ruins of Casa Grande If you ever wanted to capture a glimpse into America's prehistoric history, a trip to the Arizona desert might be in order. There you can see the Casa Grande Ruins, a four-story dirt pueblo that has survived for centuries. Built in 1350 by the ancient Sonoran people, the group is believed to have descended from early hunter-gatherers around 5,500 BC. Strangely enough, their structure was abandoned only a century later. With no writing left behind, no one knows much about the people who built Casa Grande, but there is some evidence of their agricultural practices. The most well-known building is the Great House, but there are other hints of the Sonoran people through the valley, stretching from Tucson to Phoenix. There are also a series of canals that stretch hundreds of miles and moved water from the river to their fields, as well as elements that allowed these ancient people to observe the summer solstice, the equinoxes, and to measure a phenomenon known as the lunar standstill that occurs every 18.6 years. But it was during the late 1300s to early 1400s that the ancestral people of the Sonoran Desert began to abandon the area. Some think it could have been from a multitude of reasons, including disease, natural disasters, drought, or floods. With the area abandoned, the only ties known to this ancient settlement are modern-day American native groups who have ancestral links to these people. They keep the spirit of their forefathers alive by continuing to honor cultural traditions, while researchers share the archaeological finds at Casa Grande as one of the tallest ancient American ruins that continue to inspire awe and curiosity. The Summer Palace The Summer Palace is one of the most fascinating places in all of China. It's located near Beijing and is the best-preserved imperial garden anywhere on Earth and is the largest of its kind still standing in China. The palace is 268 years old and is filled with gardens, temples, and ancient pavilions. The palace was originally designed to achieve harmony with nature. Of course, it was also made for the imperial family as a summer retreat from the stuffy walls of the Forbidden City. The Summer Palace was commissioned in 1750 by Emperor Chiang Long of the Qing Dynasty. It was destroyed by the French in 1860 and rebuilt six years later. It was destroyed again in 1900 by the Allied forces of the Eight Powers, then rebuilt once more 12 years later. Its final rebuilding was one of the final acts made by the Qing Dynasty. What's really interesting about the Summer Palace is that it's one of those archaeological sites that has never been out of use. Ever since it was originally built, it has been occupied and used. It may have been destroyed twice, but it was rebuilt each time bigger and more impressive. It currently holds a small trove of artifacts brought together from all over China. Depending on who you ask, a visit to the Summer Palace is even more amazing than a trip to see the Great Wall. What do you think? Palace or Wall? Which one would you want to visit? Let me know in the comments below!
The Legendary Spinosaurus By far the coolest and most amazing dinosaur fossil ever found hidden in the Sahara Desert was that of the Spinosaurus. Paleontologists working in the Moroccan part of the Sahara unearthed one of the biggest and most intact Spinosaurus fossils ever, the Spinosaurus aegyptiacus. This legendary monster was the first known aquatic dino. It was a 50-foot-long predator with a massive sail on its back, huge teeth for ripping apart prey, and stubby little arms like a T-Rex. The Spinosaurus hunted in the ancient river systems about 100 million years ago. According to Nizar Ibrahim, an explorer with National Geographic and a paleontologist with the University of Detroit Mercy, the tail of the Spinosaurus is utterly bizarre and worked as a propulsive organ to move the large animal through the water. It even had a snout like a crocodile that it could use to catch fish. And even though the Spinosaurus could easily swim through the water, it also roamed the land. The amazing fossil was discovered buried under 15 tons of rock. The team of paleontologists labored in 120 degree heat, they were beaten by sandstorms, some of them were attacked by snakes, and it proved to be an entire adventure just to get the enormous bones out from under the rocks. But it was worth it, as the skeleton of this monster proved that the Sahara Desert was once home to the world's first river dragon, the Spinosaurus. Would you go fossil hunting in the Sahara? Let me know in the comments below! The Mari Man The Mari Man is a mysterious geoglyph in the middle of the desert. He is located in the dust near the small town of Mari, over 350 miles from the nearest major city. The geoglyph itself is enormous, over 2.2 miles from head to toe. It's so big that it can be seen from space, and was even photographed by NASA's Operational Land Imager in 2019. According to NASA, nobody knows who created the enormous geoglyph, or what its purpose was, but it has been there at least since 1998 when a pilot noticed it while flying over southern Australia. The Mari Man is a lot like the Nazca Lines. Somebody at some point carved the shape of a hunter holding either a stick or a boomerang into the desert floor. But unlike the Nazca Lines, the Mari Man is alone. He is the only geoglyph in the area. He is also striking to see from the air, as he is literally massive. He is the biggest drawing of a person in the world. He is also quite detailed. One of the reasons he looks so clear is that in 2013, when NASA was snapping photos of the Mari Man, they noticed his color was fading. Local Australians teamed together to restore the man to his previous glory, redrawing his lines to make him distinct again. They also created wind grooves in the sand so that in the future, the Mari Man might turn green. Lake Dolores Water Park During the 1950s, a California businessman named Bob Myers built a private water park for his extended family off Interstate 15 in Newberry Springs. It first opened its doors in 1962 and eventually evolved into a 250-acre recreational facility that was made open to the public. The property went by several different names over the years, including Discovery Water Park, Rocka Hoopla Water Park, and Lake Dolores Water Park. These names reflect buyers and other owners' numerous attempts to rebrand and reopen the site, and bad luck seemed to plague the business. Each time someone tried to clean up the water park's image in hopes of drawing a resurgence of visitors, it seems like something got in the way. Byers held onto the business until 1990 when he sold it to an investment group who upgraded the equipment and reimagined the park with a 1950s theme. But their luck wasn't any better than his. After operating for just three seasons and accumulating copious amounts of debt, the park closed yet again. One more buyer tried and failed to turn the site into a success and the property has been closed since 2004. The weathered, graffiti-covered equipment and buildings left behind are not only an eyesore, they are also said to be dangerous. There are rumors that the park will reopen yet again, but this hasn't happened. As of September, the property was listed on the market for $11 million. If you happen to be in the market for an abandoned, bad luck play desert water park. New Nazca Line Cat Found the Nazca lions are one of the most puzzling creations of the ancient world. The lions carved into the deserts of Peru are made up of several hundred geometric and biomorphic figures. They were created by removing rocks and earth to reveal the contrasting material below. It is said that these served as indicator maps or as gifts to the gods, and to this day they continue to cause speculation and wonder. Now, a new etching has been found, adding extra fuel to the historical fire in southern Peru. Like most of the other Nazca lines, the cat design dates back to between 200 BC and 100 BC. 
This new feline image was discovered when work was performed to give better access to one of the nearby hills that offers a vantage point over the other ancient designs. Made a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994, the Nazca Lines are located 250 miles south of Lima and stretch some 175 square miles along Peru's coastal plains. Experts say the design was almost missed because of its location on a very steep slope. As natural erosion threatens these geoglyphs, luckily conservationists were able to clean and preserve it, highlighting the 120-foot-long image of the cat. In recent years, 80 to 100 new designs have been uncovered, some of which predated the Nazca culture, showing that multiple groups took to the hills to create these larger-than-life etchings. As technology continues to evolve, some researchers have taken to using drones in order to get a better look at these ancient etchings. With more than 1,000 geoglyphs already known about, the discovery of this newest design adds more evidence to the idea that there could still be more hidden images out there just waiting to be found. Go Chang Dolmen Site the Go Chang Dolmen site is a prehistoric cemetery located in Korea and one of Korea's most spectacular ancient wonders. There are dozens of tombs found throughout the site that were constructed starting in the 7th century BC. The tombs are significantly more primitive than those found in Europe and normally consist of one massive rock slab balanced on two smaller stones with a burial plot hidden underneath. These tombs were constructed by an ancient culture and are unlike any other Neolithic funerary monuments on Earth. At least 440 dolmens are located at the Gochang site. There have been jewels, stone tools, pottery pieces, and other artifacts excavated from around the dolmens. Unfortunately, not a lot is known about the Bronze Age cultures that lived on the Korean peninsula. These historical landmarks have only been investigated over the past few decades, and barely any human remains have been found. Until archaeologists do a lot more digging, we won't know how similar these ancient builders were with other cultures across the world from around the same time. Thanks for watching! Which of these mysterious archaeological sites would you want to visit? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for another amazing video. See you later!